I think that this is something that if you look at it pragmatically, all of these countries trading in local currencies and using gold either as a balance of, of settlement uh, tool or just to continue to accumulate it instead of holding all excess reserves that are now being largely or for a long time have been held in treasuries now would be moved to gold and other strategic commodities. I think that will have a profound effect and will speed up the de-dollarization until ultimately they have not only mass adoption, but have thought it through um, significantly. How do we make it work? How do we pledge commodities, perhaps, or peg commodities to a distributed ledger? How do we show that? Countries like Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Russia are increasingly bypassing the U.S. dollar in international trade. This is driven by the momentum gained from trade sanctions imposed on Russia, which limited trade conducted in U.S. dollars. China and India have already initiated trade settlements with Russia using their respective currencies, allowing other nations to follow suit and reduce dependency on the U.S. dollar. This strategic maneuver enables these countries to trade freely, particularly with sanctioned entities like Russia. It underscores a broader global trend of seeking alternatives to the U.S. dollar to evade the constraints imposed by U.S.-dominated financial systems. Indeed, this trend poses a significant challenge to the dominance of the U.S. dollar in international transactions. In Andy Schechtman's perspective, the current surge in transactions settled in local currencies is more than just a practical workaround. It represents a transformative bridge toward a new financial paradigm. The growing prevalence of local currency transactions and the strategic accumulation of commodities, notably gold, mark a significant departure from the traditional reliance on U.S. treasuries. Despite its elevated price, gold remains a sought-after asset by central banks worldwide as part of de-dollarization efforts. The World Gold Council reports that central bank buying continued robustly last year, maintaining a staggering pace observed since 2022, with demand reaching 1,037 tons, the second highest on record, down just 45 tons from the previous year. The implications of this shift are profound, potentially eroding the dollar's hegemony in global finance. Ultimately, Andy perceives the gradual accumulation of commodities, the diversification away from dollar-centric assets, and the collaborative approach to financial governance as pivotal strides toward forging a more equitable and sustainable global financial architecture. We will present clips from Andy Sheckman's interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. I think people need to understand that the fixation that we all have, and I, I've been guilty of it too, um, of, of, a, of a common settlement currency is something that really we need to kind of pump the brakes on and think about for a moment. You know, I think that there's a high probability, just as Sergei Glasnyov, I believe is his name, said, yeah, there's going to be a common settlement currency pegged to a basket of commodities. And everyone knows that gold was reclassified tier one. And sees the central banks buying and assuming that that's going to happen immediately. But I have, you know, maybe another take on it, the more that I reflect upon it, and is that when you see all of these deals being settled in local currencies, that's what this bridge in essence is. It is a bridge, just like the Project M bridge, where we just saw China do this big trade uh, with, uh, I think it was, uh, I don't even remember who they, maybe Saudi Arabia. I don't remember who they did it with just recently. In fact, I could tell you who it was with, but they, they just did this big trade using the M bridge and the M bridge is a way for them to, let's see here, Bank of China did um, uh, da, 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 14 million CBD settlement for overseas gold via the Shanghai Financial Exchange in December, 2020. Uh, that's not it. Uh, 1 million barrels of oil from the Petro China. They're using the M bridge and basically the M bridge is, is the same thing here. It's just a digital platform that allows these central bank digital currencies to trade with one another, not using the, the, the SWIFT settlement mm -hmm. system. So if all of these countries that are coming together um, and, and they're waiting to do it the right way to list a, a common settlement currency, which will probably happen if they all agree in the meantime to trade with one another in their local currencies using this bridge platform with, with which supersedes the, the SWIFT, <clears throat> that's the first step of, at, at chipping away at the hegemony of the dollar. You know, what we're really seeing is that the proceeds are no longer going into treasuries. And so they're buying gold and commodities in place of treasuries. And there is no counterparty risk in holding gold. There is no sanction or confiscation risk mm -hmm. in holding gold. And that's really what I think we're seeing in the treasury market, that 
look, you know, Janet Yellen is screaming, take those assets and use it to build the Ukraine. Well, that's wholly hypocritical and not for the world reserve currency to be able to decide. So I, I think that this is something that if you look at it pragmatically, all of these countries trading in local currencies and using gold either as a balance of, of settlement uh, tool or just to continue to accumulate it instead of holding all excess reserves that are now being largely or for a long time have been held in treasuries now would be moved to gold and other strategic commodities. I think that will have a profound effect and will speed up the de-dollarization until ultimately they have not only mass adoption, but have thought it through um, significantly. How do we make it work? How do we pledge commodities perhaps, or peg commodities to a distributed mm -hmm. ledger? How do we show that? How do we give everyone equal say? And if you look at the way the BRICs are, they're very cooperative. No one is beholden to anyone else. They're all there at their own accord because they want to be. Mm -hmm. And the presidency rotates. It was in South Africa last year. It's in Russia this year. And next year, it moves to Brazil as we continue to share power, or they continue to share power amongst the members. I think it's a system that is ideological, and it very very well could work. But the one thing I admire the most about the way that they're going about their business is that they are making everyone think it's a giant nothing burger by not throwing everything in our face. They're mm -hmm. slowly slowly making relationships, accumulating commodities, shedding dollars, and building infrastructure to make it a, a really legitimate foe. And all of it being done in a cooperative manner rather than a coercive manner, I think it has great legs. And ultimately, we probably will see a common settlement currency. But until then, the act of trading amongst themselves and using gold as a means to hold reserves is a huge, huge chop in the in the legs of, of the stool, if you will, of, of the American uh, hegemony. Gold's recent gains contrast sharply with the weakening U.S. dollar, signaling a potential shift in market dynamics. Reflecting on 2015, when gold struggled while the dollar remained stable, underscores the remarkable transformation in their fortune since then. Today, gold's value has soared, while the dollar has only marginally improved, highlighting the resilience of gold as an investment. But what if the dollar encounters hurdles and investors lose faith in it? Evidence suggests a significant withdrawal of gold from exchanges since February 2021, signaling a growing distrust in fiat currencies. Despite reports of positive real rates driven by questionable CPI data, the economic outlook appears troubling. While consumer confidence data may initially seem optimistic, consistent revisions revealing negativity raise doubts about economic indicators' accuracy. Predicting a significant market shift in this complex and uncertain landscape proves challenging for Andy. Nevertheless, insiders quietly bolstering their positions with gold and preparing for potential scenarios suggest trouble may be lurking beneath the surface. Let's get back to the interview. I want people to think about something, you know, in terms of, of, of what gold could really do. Uh, you know, people think that the dollar has to... to um, be completely destroyed before we see this moment. But you go back to 2015, gold had just made a low, basically, real darn close to it. And the dollar index was at a 104. And if you go to where we are right now, nine years later, gold has doubled and the dollar is only up 5%. And this is what I mean about the tortoise, not the hare. Well, what happens when the dollar starts to get club and everyone starts dumping dollars? And you see that 54% of all the COMEX gold has been taken off the COMEX since February 2021. And I guess what I would say is that when gold starts to rise in your currency, despite, I guess we can even call it the illusion of positive real rates, which we've seen here, which I, we all know they're not real, but according to the lies that we get out of the CPI, okay, they're real. That means your government's got some serious debt problems if rates remain positive. And I don't believe you'll see rates fall one bit. Now you're beginning to see them taking that off the table and even talking about rate increases. You're beginning to see a steepening of the of the yield curve again, where you know people are shedding 10-year treasuries in anticipation and 20-year and 30-year in anticipation of higher inflation to buy the short-term rates and, and the debt issuance of Janet Yellen and the spending you're going to see, I think, higher rates on short-term treasuries and higher rates on long-term treasuries. And the bottom line is this is not good for the funding prospects of the debt and of maintaining it for Main Street. And you're going to see all sorts of problems with commercial real estate and all of that stuff will manifest. What is the trigger? 
who the heck knows? I, we live in a world where, you know, all of a sudden uh, nothing makes sense. But, you know, it's interesting. Jamie Dimon bought 1.235 million shares of JP Morgan between 2009 and 16 at the bottom. And he just sold eight, almost 822,000 shares at the top for $150 million for the first time ever. And we keep talking about all of these insiders that are selling or Janet, oh, not Janet, what's her name? Nancy Pelosi, who just bought huge call options on a cyber, uh, 1.25 million on a, on a Palo Alto's networks, one of the leading cybersecurity companies in the world. And lo and behold, that's way up today. And so when you talk about what's happening, the, the rot at the highest level of, mm -hmm. of our uh, leaders, our administrations, um, you know, and, and yet when people try to figure out where the hell we are, but Craig Hemke did a, a really had a really interesting article. He talked about the fact that for the last four months in a row, the 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 consumer confidence data came out really high, and and you would see you know big market moves off this consumer confidence data. But shh, really quietly, they've revised four months in a row to massively negative. In fact, this in January it was the the most negative since February of 2022. And so whether it be lies about consumer confidence, about inflation, about interest rates, about any of this stuff, we're being misdirected, we're being lied to. And at the same time, Bezos and Zuckerberg and, and Diamond and the CFO of Discover Company and all of these insiders and tech insiders, they're, they're building bunkers and heading for the hills. It's misdirection. And I think that people need to understand the fact that... Um, we haven't seen things play out the way we would expect them to in a linear world. This is a very, a very high stakes game. And if you're getting close to the end of the game and the insiders who know the playbook, well, they're not going to tell any of us. They're going to do all they can to position themselves, whether it be getting out of equities and into cash, accumulating gold. What is it? Druckenmiller, I think, just bought huge amounts of gold. The, the insiders know the playbook. And you have to sometimes see what they're doing. And As gold prices continue to exhibit resilience, today's modest rebound indicates a broader trend poised to unfold. The ongoing decline in the U.S. dollar index and a decrease in Treasury yields lays the groundwork for gold's sustained ascent. With the attractiveness of gold bolstered for holders of alternative currencies, the price surge above $2,000 per ounce underscores its appeal as a safe haven asset in times of economic uncertainty. Yet amidst fluctuating market conditions, this upward trajectory of gold prices is likely to persist, offering investors a stable hedge against volatile currencies and uncertain financial landscapes. We would love your thoughts on Andy's predictions in the comments below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.